Besides being drafted and, and, and sent to war, I was too young for the draft at that time. Besides, they wouldn't take you out of school and put you into the draft. And I was uh, uh, just getting into uh, the uh, uh, senior year. Um, but we had things to do. First of all, we had to replace everybody that was already out of high school, working on farms or whatever, or whatever else that had been drafted. And uh, the, 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 uh, the farmers' wives need to uh, uh, help. help her harvesting crops, we would go out and, 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 uh, and light smudge pots at 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I ran a listening post in Oroville. We had to listen for aircraft coming over, enemy aircraft. And uh, they were about 10 miles apart up and down the state. Uh, and had to report any, any, any uh, um, audio aircraft that came in across the other night. And, and, and those were miserable days. I mean, we're out in these little outposts maybe 10 miles apart, all up and down the state, up in the country. Uh, pouring down rain sometimes, uh, uh, bitter cold sometimes. All we had in there were in those little uh, uh, listening posts were, were uh, uh, a, a, little, a little stove and a, and, and a gas lantern to, to uh, keep you, uh, help try to keep you up with your homework, a place to do homework. Little things like that. We were, we were um, uh, all over the place. Uh, worked in a cannery. Uh, I've worked in, in, uh, on, on farms and all of those things. Wherever we were needed, we would go out and volunteer in order to uh, take the place of the, the, the ranchers or, or, or merchants or whatever that had been drafted and sent off to war, including my two brothers uh, who were older than I. But uh, the, uh, the, 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 uh, in, in the meantime, uh, when I was younger, I, I took up an interest in skiing. Mother and dad were, 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 were up in the snow quite often. We had a, a, a cabin at Bucks Lake and it, it, it snowed up there a lot, so I would ski into there in the winter times. So I was interested in getting into the ski troops. Sounded glamorous, wasn't, but uh, <laughs> it sounded good and it gave me an avenue of approach anyway. But at that time you had to have three letters of recommendation to get into that outfit as to your ski ability. 
Well, I, I, I had a bunch of friends that I was skiing with all the time, the older than I, and, and uh, I was able to uh, come up with those three letters of recommendation, recommendation which I gave to the draft board, and they said, well, just keep, keep your, uh, 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 Keep, we'll keep those records of, 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 your, of your desires, and when your numbers come up for drafting, uh, you ask and we will bring those letters out and, and send those along with your papers to wherever you do your basic training. So they did, and that's exactly what happened. When I got out of high school, immediately got uh, uh, sent off to uh, um, uh, basic, basic training camp uh, uh, at uh, Camp Roberts, and then one day, I uh, was called in after about six weeks of training down there and, and said, uh, uh, you, 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 you pick up your gear and, and, and uh, meet tomorrow's train and, and you're going to Colorado. So that's, that's where I started basic training of, of the 10th Mountain Division. We were on skis all the time during the winter. Camp Hale, Colorado, which is uh, depicted over here, um, is, is 9,500 feet, and it's in a hole, and a, 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 a deep canyon, a, a, a valley in a deep canyon with a railroad running by it, uh, and full of coal smoke all the time. Uh, the coal smoke got to a lot of guys in their, in their, in their lungs. Uh, anybody that smoked fell by the wayside quick because they couldn't put up with the coal smoke and they couldn't have put up with the, with the uh, elevation and they would fall back all the time. So basically the, the uh, uh, people with, with, guys with asthma or, or any weaknesses at all in their lungs, uh, <clears throat> usually the smokers, uh, that's what started people thinking. Maybe there's something correlated between uh, high elevation and, 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 and uh, um, uh, uh, smoking. So that certainly proved to be the case. Anyway, um, we, we trained there in Colorado for three years, um, two years to be exact, two, over two years, two and a half years. And, and then we moved to Italy um, into the Italian campaign. We landed in Naples on Christmas Day in 1944 and uh, uh, were there for, for, for about three days and then they moved us up under the, under the, uh, under the boot. And, and, and the uh, boot of, of, of the shape of Italy, and, and um, where, were, where the front lines at that point were in the Apennines, uh, 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 which are, are a relatively low mountain uh, range as, as compared with the Alps, but they went up to about 7,000 feet, kind of like our, our northern Sierras, but not as much as the high Sierra country. <coughs> so we, we uh, we, we, we dug in and, and, and they determined where, they, where the enemies were in that area, and there weren't a lot of them right along the, 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 uh, the coast there, but we got up into the mountains and we ran into uh, a lot of combat right off the bat. Now we're about uh, 25 miles out of Florence now, and, and that's where the, where the, uh, uh, where the, 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 the previous uh, division that we relieved uh, had, had dug in about that point. You, you know, we, uh, Italy took a beating during the war, a real beating. The, 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 the Germans took it over and cleared out into the African desert, and then we had to start fighting out into the Af African, de African desert before we could get another toehold onto the boot of Italy. And, and uh, that, that took some amphibious landings, and we lost a lot of men in the Italian campaign, uh, about which I know more than any other part of the war. <coughs> so, anyway, uh, um, we were had had some miserable days there in that area, but uh, we, we we weren't doing much in the way of any of, of any uh, um, uh, uh, much military action yet. We were just kind of trying to feel out the lines, find out exactly where the Germans were. We wouldn't go outside in the villages in the daytime because. The mountains were up higher and they were looking right down on us, the Germans were. So we had to do all our moving at night. And, uh, <clears throat> and then, and then we, it came time for, for, for our, uh, um, uh, our campaign a little bit later and uh, we, um, uh, for our uh, offensive. And uh, so we started moving um, the 
guys up into the into the areas there, and and Howard Cook, for example, was in the group that went up and, and did some ropes in there and and, uh, um, uh, put, and went up this big cliff and attacked some German forces up there on the on, on the top. We took them by surprise, and uh, that kind of kicked off our offensive in the Apennine Mountains. Um, but let me let me go over here where the map is, and, and I will show you a little bit more about. Uh, uh, that, that area. Uh, okay, uh, I'm going to back up a minute. All of my training is as an S3 uh, a specialist. S3 is, uh, is um, uh, uh, plans and operations. S1 personnel, S2 intelligence, S3 plans and operations, and S4 supply. Those are the basic elements of, a, of, of an infantry division. But there's G1 for, for, for the, the, the division uh, uh, levels on those, or S, uh, this is S3, uh, for, for the uh, uh, regimental and, and uh, uh, battalion levels. I was an S3 specialist, and my duties was to know, was to plot on a map exactly where the enemy was, exactly where our forces were, and, and, and keep this information flowing um, as fast as we could. <clears throat> out into the front lines, which sometimes were right there, or sometimes maybe as much as a couple of 300 yards uh, ahead of us, but because uh, we were moving constantly. And uh, we, had, we had a lot of, <clears throat> once we kicked off of the, 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 the final offensive, uh, we moved uh, pretty fast for a while, uh, but we lost a lot of guys right there in, in the Apennines before we Start, started making a faster progress down into the Pole Valley. Um, <clears throat> I'm going pretty fast because I'm going to back up a little while and, 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 and elaborate as, as, as I answer questions on some of these things. Um, we, we crossed the Pole River um, after we had gotten out into the Pole Valley for a while and, and, and the, the, the Italian people were very, very happy to see the Americans move in. And once we got down on the flat land and the Germans were, were, were uh, 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 falling back, uh, they would be out along the highway with a box on a table like this, set up with a couple of jugs of wine for us uh, to, to, to uh, uh, greet us. And, and uh, they were just as happy as could be to see the Americans get, get back and, 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 and just, uh, get, the, get the German forces uh, uh, in, in retreat. Uh, we crossed the Pole River in the middle of the night, a dark night, uh, uh, half wading and half on ducks. And, and uh, it was a miserable experience, but we were <coughs> moving as fast as we could to try to, to uh, maintain our offensive. Um, I remember it's, it's, a, it's a number of miles, maybe 30, 30, 40 miles from the Pole River to the gates of Verona. Uh, we're right up in the middle of that Italian area going across the Pole Valley and, and, and on up towards the Alps. The, uh, the, the, um, again, we, we would not drop any bombs in, in, in the city of Verona, but the Germans didn't hold to, to, uh, to, to that agreement entirely. What they did was to blow the bridges then there were nine bridges in Verona across the Adagi River and then a big, in a big U shape. Uh, and the big walls around the city of Verona. How many have been to Verona? Any of you? Just one or two? Uh, uh, Verona is a beautiful city, a big, big, beautiful mid medieval city. It has a big, uh, a big uh, Colosseum and uh, they have their, their, their big uh, Verona opera there still every, every summer in August. Uh, and it's sold out every summer, and, and uh, uh, about uh, six weeks of uh, opera in this big old ancient Colosseum uh, every night during, during the, uh, the, uh, the uh, late summer uh, opera season there. But um, <clears throat> at, at, when we got to Verona, we, we had a lot of bloody battles just on the outside of the wall. Uh, and uh, where, the, where the Germans had tried to put up some defense at that point. I, I remember one, one guy that I had to, to 
step over a, a German guy. I had several close calls, real close. One back in the Appenites, which I'll tell you about in a minute. But then, and this one guy, is this, this, this German was laid down on his back, his shirt was off, he was breathing through a hole in his chest, just gurgling. And, and, and he, you couldn't stop, we couldn't, we couldn't stop, we couldn't do anything for them. What could we possibly do? Anyway, we, we, we moved into Verona, and we were there for, for, for one day, and, and uh, they, they pulled us out because we had moved too fast ahead of everybody else in the Italian offensive, and, and uh, we weren't supposed to have taken Verona. Uh, so so uh, we, didn't get, get, uh, we didn't get credit for that, so they pulled us out under the, under the place, uh, a landing strip called Villa, uh, uh, in, a, in a little town about 20 miles out of Verona called Villa Franca, and we were out there for a day while we regrouped and got ready for uh, our, our big campaign, which was up the shoreline of Lager di Garda. Anybody here been to Lager di Garda? It's Italy's largest lake, and um, it's a place where I think you ought to go. Uh, beautiful, beautiful. But um, um, I'll, I'll come back and pick up some of these pieces that I'm skipping over uh, in question and answers. Uh, at Lager di Garda, how many have been up the Feather River Highway? Most everybody's been up the Feather River Highway. You know, along the Feather, Feather River Highway, there's a place where, where you have the tunnels. And, and the big granite cliffs come right down over those tunnels and right into the river. Well, just picture that river being Lago de Garda. And, and those tunnels is just exactly the same. Big granite cliffs coming right down and, and, and uh, um, uh, uh, falling into the in, into the uh, in the lake of, in this case, uh, Lago de Garda is about uh, uh, 50 miles long. It's, it's a little bigger than Tahoe, probably, but not as wide. Longer, but not, not as wide. Uh, and at the, the northern end of the lake, where we were now, uh, it was probably uh, um, a mile and a half wide. Uh, but uh, the Germans had, had used that area as as a, as a major defense area, and they weren't going to let us get a foothold beyond, beyond the upper end, into that upper end of the lake, because from then on it would be relatively easy and, and, and uh, compared to that natural defense that uh, we had there in the, in the Lago de Garda area. Uh, we uh, finally, after we lost a lot of guys in, in, in the tunnels, we had one airburst from the German 88s firing at us from a mile across the lake, we got right inside the tunnel and killed a bunch of guys one at one shot. Uh, we had another instance where the, 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 uh, the, we had the reinforcements coming up the, in the water uh, in ducks, the, the military military type ducks, and, and uh, they got shot at and, and that duck went down and it's down there today. They've tried to retrieve it. All the men are still aboard that duck down the bottom of the lake. A lot of, I have a lot of stories I could tell about Lago de Garda. Um, but I won't bore you with all of them, but rest assured that I, that I, I made some contacts in Lago de Garda. I fell in love with the place. Um, but this is no time to make love with the, with the, with the, with the resort area. This is, there's, there's a war going on, we're still shooting outside. Um, we, we, uh, we, we moved in, into another uh, 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 a, a town on Lago de Garda over Riva, which is uh, just opposite uh, Torbali, uh, about, about three miles, and, and, and then there was a, a big, big rock stuck up in the, in the valley there, um, uh, in, in the middle of the valley with a church on top. Uh, my battalion uh, moved into that area because we could now had, had good, good vision of the whole, the whole valley there behind the, uh, behind the end of the lake. And, and uh, uh, we, we, we uh, had about two nights in that big uh, castle up there in the mountains, and we got word that the Germans had surrendered in Italy. So at that point, we, we, uh, we, we climbed back on to our, to our uh, uh, jeeps and, 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 and caravans and uh, whatever we could find to, to appropriate for to getting us on up to the Austrian border. Because we, this, when the war was still going down on in Austria, that the Italians now down in, in, in Italy had surrendered. 
So we moved up to the uh, up to the past possible Russia, which is the junction of Italy, Austria, and Switzerland, not too far from Innsbruck. And, and we were there at that point when the, when, when the final armistice was, was signed on May the 8th. Um, so, so that's a, a brief description of the part of Italy that the 10th Mountain covered. We did a lot of training, three years in training at Camp Hill, Colorado, a uh, short uh, amount of, of, of training down in the flatlands around the Camp Swift by Austin, Texas. Horrible place. <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> it, 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 Italy was a jewel compared to that, that awesome camp at 110 degrees in, 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 in out in the flatland of Texas. But uh, anyway, I, I have some, some, some photographs here that I've taken along the way. And they're in no particular order. Uh, not only photographs, but uh, uh, pictures of, of, of some of our encampments. This is my work here, with, 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 with plans and operations and putting, putting all this together in, in final form, which I did um, at uh, my commander's request after we got back to, to uh, uh, Fort Carson, Colorado, before we were disbanded. We had a lot of paperwork to catch up with. So I put this together. My name's down there at the bottom of it. And it's a tracing of, a, of an overlay of, of a map. And it tells every little place we were right down to the minute along the way. And um, uh, I was quite proud of that because the work has been distributed all over the country. I made copies of it and copies of copies, and, and uh, a lot of people have that in their, in their, in their uh, memoirs. Um, but the, 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 the other pictures you can look, look at, and, and uh, you, you'll get to, to see some of the combat areas, and you'll get to see some of the uh, activities at Cap Hale and, and, and along the way. Um, I, uh, I don't want to be laborious on anything uh, without getting into questions and answers because a lot of, a lot of, a lot of other stuff here uh, uh, might, might, uh, um, might be less important than answering some questions that you might have. I enjoyed my, uh, my, my uh, ten tenure with the 10th Mountain Division for the three years that I was in the service. Um, I was in the mountains. I loved it. I was in high elevations, I loved it. Camping out in the snow, I loved that. No problem, I've been, been camping in the high Sierra country on many, many occasions uh, since. Uh, a friend of mine by the, that I was closely associated with was with S2, the intelligence, in the, in, 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 uh, David Brower. Um, some of you might know the word David Brower. Well, he and I were just like that, because I was S3 and he was S2. Uh, so we worked together constantly and uh, did a lot of of uh, yeah, snow camping uh, up in the high country uh, after we got out of the service for, for several years we did that. Um, uh, I had a lot of respect for, for Dave, he, he, he did very well. He headed up the Sierra Club for, for a lot of years and, uh, and, and uh, the mission's number one conservationist with his picture on the Time Magazine at one point. Uh, basically, that's a little bit of, the, of, the, of my background and where I came from. I came from the little town of Oroville. And the war, the war has just started. Picture, picture this now. You're out lighting smudge watch at 3 o'clock in the morning on cold, frosty mornings. Or you're, 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 you're helping somebody. Uh, you're working in the cannery because there's no, no workforce left in town. They're all going to war. So a high school student would fill that gap uh, on many, many occasions. And, and, and work, working on these, uh, uh, putting in time, um, uh, working on a cannery, or, or this, listen, uh, listening to for airplane flights uh, uh, and recording them uh, in the middle of the night, uh, out in the tent with the raining outside. Uh, and there were no lights, no lights, no lights. You could drive with your park light on only. No headlights, no street lights. No neon signs. We were in the dark. All up and down the coast, we were in the dark. So uh, it wasn't easy getting from one place to another when you had to use gas stamps, or you had to travel by dark, or, or uh, uh, 
you know, I don't know how we did it, but there, were, there was a, a group of us of half a dozen skiers in Oroville, and we always managed somehow to come up with enough gas temps to, to go skiing. So, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't easy, but we did a lot of bartering. So and, anyway, um, a, lot of, a lot of little episodes like that that, that you'll always remember. Uh, so let's, let, let's answer some questions now, Gordon. As a kid, I remember your descriptions of the detonation of those bridges in Verona. I think that's worth okay. presenting. I'm glad you mentioned that, Gordon. As, as we approached Verona on, on the cold um, uh, April morning, clear as a bell, clear as a bell. The sun hadn't come up yet. Whom? Hear these distant rumblings. Didn't know what they were at first. And then we noticed up in the sky, preceding the sound, was the, the sound waves traveling out like you, you throw a rock into a pond of water. You can see the sound waves echoing out in, 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 in the dawn sky, directly above you know, the city of Verona. Verona. There were nine um, medieval bridges in, in, in Verona. Every one of them was blown up. And, uh, not a piece left. But uh, a few years after the war, the Italians started putting those things back together. And now you go up there and, 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 and go to Verona and you go across those bridges. Every one of them looks like it was built back in the 11 or 1200s. Uh, and, and back in the same medieval style that they were in the first place. And you would never know that they're replicas of that bridge that we were blown on the 26th of April that morning that we that we moved in. Now I've been to Verona several times. I've been to uh, since the war. I've never been there during the opera season. I always wanted to, but it doesn't start until till August each year in the, in the, in the Colosseum. It's, it's uh, Europe's largest outdoor um, um, uh, facility or something like that. It holds 20,000 people or so. Uh, it's, a, it's a big arena. There's a couple of pictures of it up here. The, 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 uh, the, the Verona um, um, Opera. Anyway, um, um, uh, we, we spent a lot of time in that area around the, around the tunnels, getting from through the tunnels, around the tunnels, over the tunnels, uh, uh, and around Torbo. Um, I, I took a, a liking for Torbo. We lost a general there. Uh, right after we, we uh, 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 took the first half of the city, uh, we were looking out the, uh, looking out of the uh, final uh, final tunnel right down from here to where your cars are parked down there um, at, at the town. And, and uh, uh, a German shell came from across the way and, and landed right in the square where, where we had our, our regimental headquarters. And, and uh, like that, uh, uh, killed our, 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 uh, our brigadier general, and uh, um, he's remembered over there a lot. Uh, uh, there's been a lot of a lot of the Temple Mountain go back to that tunnel battle area around La Vendée Garden. We had a lot of memories in that area. It's now a big resort town, beautiful. I would recommend you travel there sometime. Yeah, Chuck. I understand you're going to Italy as a guest of the Italian government. Could you uh -huh. tell us about that? Okay, I'm glad you mentioned that. I, I got a letter. I, I've sent a lot of material over there to to uh, to uh, uh, to the uh, historical society in in, in Torbo. I got a letter here six weeks ago. Said they would like to have me come over as their guest. All expenses paid, including air. And, uh, for two people and uh, uh, to participate in, in, in uh, the, the, uh, uh, the uh, dedication of their new history center. And they, they know I got a lot of pictures, so they, they probably expect me to bring some, which I will. And this is a sampling of the stuff that I have in, 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 in the Lago de Garda area. So I will leave um, uh, uh, two weeks from this coming weekend. Um, with my daughter Lori, Gordon has been over there before, and my other daughter Terry, who, who teaches school up in, in uh, 
Quincy. Uh, she's been over there before as a Rotary Club exchange student. Uh, and and uh, so, so she's traveled with me over there quite a bit. But Lori has never been to, uh, to Italy. So she, she's going with me. And uh, in two weeks, we'll be over there for, for uh, 15 days uh, as, as guests of the Italians in, in uh, Torboli. And we will go back to the other places, too. She, they want to take us clear back to, to where we landed and go right up through the battle areas so that they can get it all recorded. Of, 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 of this with me, and of the master that, that this is depicted from uh, with me, and uh, it'll be there in the museum. So I'm looking forward to that trip. It's a very costly trip, I can, I can assure you. We already have the airline tickets and we're all set to go. Okay, now let's, yes. There's a couple pictures there, Will. Uh, it looks like you're in a dress uniform. And there's a you're hugging a woman, and then on the other side, Ooh. there's Ooh. It, it's, Ooh. well, and That's, then it says it's the, you're being es, uh, escorted up to the podium. Can you explain what those pictures okay, are? Okay, that's a, that's a reunion that I put together a few years ago. Fiftieth uh, uh, reunion. Our our, our our Tenth Mountain Division has reunions every third year, right from the start. Uh, um, and and uh, fifty isn't divisible by three. So they, they didn't want to have a 50th reunion. I thought 50th was a, a real mark of, 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 uh, of memory. So I put together a reunion and, and got a bunch of guys, uh, eight of us, and we went back, and, and, and their wives, plus there were, there were 16 of us all together. And uh, <clears throat> the, 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 uh, we worked with an Italian travel guide and, and told them through a travel agent in Sacramento they, they, they arranged the whole thing, so they took us right through all the battlegrounds, and, and uh, we, we visited every every spot that we that, were, that we hovered over during the war, uh, including a lot of time in Verona, and, and we let the Verona people know ahead of time that we were coming over there, and they declared it a national holiday. So that that that, that they had marching bands out, they had a big parade, and, and the lady that uh, that I had my arms around was the mayor of Verona. She had us up in her in her office and 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 and, and, and uh, walked us out under under the big steps that, that are right next to the Colosseum. Beautiful, beautiful place, and a beautiful experience. And we worked, we worked with the Rotary Club. I've, I've been a Rotarian for all of my life, and uh, I have well over about 50 or 60 years or more in, in Rotary clubs around the place, whether it be in. Stockton or, 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 or uh, wherever we live, and, and, and uh, more recently through the Quincy Rotary Club. So anyway, they, we got the Rotary to help us out, and, 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 and they sent a lot of stuff over there for to help make this a memorable occasion, the 50th year return of, of the American troops. We represented the American troops, and there were just a small number of us there. And, and I was in my uniform. Yeah. In those pictures here, and that was not too many years ago. It didn't fit this morning, <laughs> <laughs> but I still have it. <laughs> but uh, yes, Bob. Did you know Howard Cook at that time, or? Oh yes, I knew Howard Cook. Uh, uh, Howard and I were, were great friends when they lived over here in Oakland. Howard's son Marty and my son Gordon were born the same day. First, first of their offspring, the very same day, but, so when, when, when Howard, you, Howard was living in the... During the war, when they, when they were over no, there... No, I haven't been over there with Howard. Uh, no, I, I, did, I knew Howard over there, yes. We did. Uh, uh, but, but only by name. I see. And, and it, was, it, was, it was later that uh, uh, Howard and I uh, hooked up some of these conventions and we, we found out we had a lot in common. But. Uh, Another elementary question. I have enough trouble carrying skis. How is it you can carry skis, a pack, and a rifle? That's got to be important. Okay. I'll tell you. I'll tell you, we left the skis at home because we had no need for them over there because they didn't have any snow on the ground when we were over there. Sure, we got up in the Apennine Mountains, but it was a, a relatively light winter. And, and by the time we got, got into the uh, higher mountains, it was, it was turning uh, uh, late March. Uh, and they pulled up, and the, the two or three feet of snow that they had was, was down to where the, the roads were all open, and, and we didn't want to be bothered with skis. 
I didn't have the capacity of carrying that much. I, I was carrying a map board and a carbine all the time, but plus all my personal gear. I'll tell you one, uh, uh, I often have this question come up, did you have any close calls? Yes, I had several close calls. Uh, not like Bob Dole, because he, he, he lost his, his, his uh, part of his audio, so to speak, and, and, and he came home crippled. Um, we were running across this potato patch uh, just at dusk for, for uh, trying to reach a, a, a given point over here uh, to set up our, uh, the next command post. We would move up and then set up a command post and then, and then wait till the troops got out there ahead and then move up right behind them doing this. And when you hear that artillery coming in, shh, shh, boom, shh, boom. You hear it coming. You get about two seconds warning, maybe a second and a half. I was exaggerating. <laughs> but but, 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 I, but I, I, I had my map board and, and, and my gear and, 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 and the pack on and the shovel on the, on, the, on the back of my pack, moving out through this potato patch, uh, trying to get from shell burst to shell burst. When, when a, a shell went off, it made enough light that you could see these little deflates in the, in, in the soil, you know. And you try to hit one of those when you hear one of these shells coming. Well, I dived into one. I had several close, close ones before this. But I dove into one, and I knew this that, that shell hit very close to me uh, because it threw dirt all over. And, and uh, but we didn't bother to check anything, and then I went on to, to this place where we were going to set up our uh, our command post <coughs> another another quarter mile away. I got up there to to, to, uh, to get my shovel off my pack. And, 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 and took my pack off uh, because we had to start digging in right away. Took that pack off and the shovel and tied it on top of my backpack it was just like a sieve that had just been hit by, by artillery uh, uh, sh uh, uh, fragments and just went right through it. So things get pretty close sometimes. When you're, when you're, when you're, but, I, but I didn't shed any blood. I was thankful for that. That was my closest call. Had some gunfire shot at me, but only from a distance, and uh, it didn't do any damage. Uh, artillery was our, main, our big concern. About four days after that, we were on the offensive, and, and they were in, and the, 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 the Germans were moving down. Hold the microphone up, Dad. Hold the microphone. Uh, uh, just a few days after that is when we started a big offensive, and we broke through the lines, and, and, and from then on was hot pursuit down off of the mountains uh, near the town of Bologna. We just curved around to Modena. And then we crossed the, the, the Po River in the middle of the night um, on ducks uh, and, and uh, um, partly swimming, partly um, no, no, never any lights. But uh, it was, it was a, a, another close call because they were still trying to hit us with uh, artillery. Yes. Um, two, actually, two questions. Um, you've got a little story about what happened to Camp Hale, right? Yes. Uh, and then also, once peace was declared, how long did it take you to get home? Two questions. Uh, the Camp Hale part was uh, pretending to. Uh, what What is it now? Oh, uh, okay. For for a long for a long time, they had left the. They, they tore down the camps, uh, most all of the military camps after the war, and uh, at Camp Hale, um, they, they, they tore down everything and left the foundations out there. Um, and, 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 and since then, they have removed all the foundations, they've leveled everything out, and there's a meadow just like it has never been disturbed. And yet we had 10,000 guys out there living in, 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 uh, in, in, in uh, housing. The other question was how long after the armistice, did it take you to get home? Oh, I forgot to tell you about something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the armistice, we, 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 uh, the armistice was signed when we were at Paso de Recio, right up on the Swiss, Austrian, Italian border, right there at the top. Um, and then and in a few days, we, we thought, well, we, 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 we hope that we can stay in that area and occupy it. But in a few days, we got 
got, got orders to go back to the Po Valley. We were going to deploy us someplace else. Well, then we got the, down to the Po Valley, and they put us in trucks and hauled us up to the junction over on the right side of, of the lane, as you look, far, look, look at it, over in the U Yugoslavian sector where, where, where um, Hito was uh, uh, causing waves. And um, um, so we, we were occupying the, the Yugoslavian border and the Austrian and the Italian border right up there in the corner. And then one day I got a call to come in uh, uh, to uh, uh, headquarters they wanted to talk to me. And, and uh, my, my, uh, my, my, my commander says, uh, um, uh, we fought right alongside the Brazilians over there. I had a lot of contact with the Brazilian forces. I was on that outside of the, 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 on the very edge of the, our Fifth Army. And the Brazilians were right there. They were part of the Fifth Army too. But they, they, it was time for the Brazilians to go home. They didn't want to get into any occupation or anything, so they wanted to go back to Rio. Now they want to take a representative, some representatives of the U.S. forces down to Rio de Janeiro to, to participate in their homecoming celebrations. Aha, uh -huh, I was selected. <laughs> how, how, how it happened, I don't know, but they said I deserved it. I don't know why, but uh, I, I didn't turn it down. Uh, so I, I left the Tenth Mountain at that point and got, and got on a whole, on a whole uh, 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 boat, a cattle boat, and, and we sailed off to Rio de Janeiro. And we got there in about 14 days, I think it was. And that was a miserable trip, just miserable. But once we got there, it was well worth it. We were treated with royalty and like kings. And then they, they, um, they put the, the, this, the representatives of the, of the American military, of which I was one, there were about 40 of us total, who we were right out in the front of the lead of that homecoming parade down the Avenida Rio Bronco. And we were housed at Copacabana Cop Cop Beach. Anybody here been to Rio? Beautiful, just a beautiful city. It was more, it was prettier then than it, than it is now because I understand that a lot, there's a lot of crime and, and, and stuff that's, that's gone on in recent years. But then I'm, I'm told also that it is, it's, on, it's, it's undergoing a cure right now. Rio is a beautiful city. You get every get a chance to go there. I have great memories of it, and uh, uh, that's the way I ended the war. Then we got uh, uh, orders to go back to. Uh, Hampton Roads, Virginia, uh, from, from Rio de Janeiro, and um, we were supposed to meet uh, the rest of the division at Hampton Roads, and so they flew us up there. They, they would pull the rest of the division out of, out of Italy, and now they're heading us towards the Pacific Theater where the war's still going on. So uh, we, were, we were halfway across the, 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 um, the U.S., and it was, it was um, we were in Indianapolis. Uh, uh, on a troop train now, heading for the West Coast. Another war still going on out there. And at that point, we dropped the second bomb, and Japan surrendered. And the war was, peace was declared on the 14th of August, which was my birthday. So they canceled our plans for the Pacific Theater. They pulled us over to Fort Carson, Colorado, where they sent everybody home within 90 days pretty well uh, utilized. Uh, uh, that was the end of the 10th Mountain, as we knew it then. Right now, there's another 10th Mountain. Uh, they, they're, they're training in, in upper New York, uh, close to Buffalo in the Adirondack areas. And uh, that 10th Mountain is uh, right now deployed in Afghanistan. And you may have seen it once in a while. and heard about it on, on, on the news. So there's still a 10th Mountain. But it's a different tip now than it was during the war. Any other questions? I, I could go. I could go on. Uh, we, I, I have lots of time. <laughs> yes. You said your relations with the Italians were very good during the war. Did the Italians and the Germans fight on the same side? Yes, they did. But uh, the Germans, the, the Italians, uh, surrendered long before the Germans did. Oh, really? The, 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 the Italians uh, surrendered. Uh, about the time um, that we were in Verona, and uh, the, uh, Mussolini had a, uh, his home was on Lago di Gaia. It was on the other side of the lake from where we were, but I have a, a picture of it, probably up here, I don't know. But uh, uh, yeah, we, we, they, 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 
that's where the that's where the right before before the Germans did. And, and uh, we were very much liked by the Italian people. Very, very much liked and still are. I hope we are, because I'm going over there in two weeks. <laughs> over, thank you so much. Well, I just realized that uh, I'm on work for 41 years uh, this month, and once upon a time, Wilbur and I would have a couple of drinks together, and he would smile every once in a while and say something like, if you could ever be Brazilian on a Saturday night, you wouldn't go back to anything else on Sunday. <laughs> now we know why. Uh, who did Maya take? The, I need you to draw one. Everybody got tickets? Okay. Take the whole thing there.